the summer holidays, a time for sun, sea and scribbling. Now your Nat 5 and higher English essay folios might be the last thing on your mind this summer. But don't waste this valuable opportunity to gather inspiration for your writing. Fortunately, anyone who reads a lot has a huge advantage when it comes to writing. Quite simply, because if you've read widely and been exposed to lots of different styles and a rich vocabulary, you're almost certainly going to be better placed to write well too. But how to practice writing when no one has set you any homework assignments? This is the best bit about writing during the summer holidays. You can write as much or as little, but at least some please, as you wish. You can write about what you want to write about. If you're a natural storyteller, and lucky you if you are, then get all those characters and plots down on paper. You might even come up with a rough idea for a short story that you can then develop for your creative writing folio next term. If you prefer discursive writing, that's absolutely fine as well. After all, if you're sitting Nat 5 or higher English, you're going to need to produce a discursive essay for your folio before too long anyway. In fact, the summer holiday, talking of discursive writing, is a great time to be listening and watching out for interesting and unusual topics for your discursive essay. What controversial issues are making the headlines, or perhaps lurking in the middle of the newspaper, making it less likely that everyone else will be writing about the same topic? Remember that the poor exam markers have to read hundreds of discursive essays, and they're probably a tad tired of reading about the for and against of legalising cannabis. Although, of course, if you have some new arguments to bring to the table, it's fine to write about anything you feel strongly about. As well as keeping an eagle eye out for promising persuasive or argumentative essay topics, you also have the freedom and the time during the six or seven weeks of summer to practice your writing skills in a less formal and structured way than in a classroom. How? Simply by writing a personal journal or diary. Recently, I published a blog post on the Learning Cauldron website in which I looked at all the benefits of journaling. Journals come in all shapes and sizes, but whether they take the form of a random old jotter, a fun and funky notebook, or a beautifully bound leather diary, the journal is yours and yours alone to do with what you please. No one else will be reading it, not your parents, not your teachers, not your friends, unless you let them. There's no essay question that you've got to somehow answer when you're writing. For once, you have complete editorial freedom. Some people like to put down just the date and month and to record in note form what they did on a particular day. For example, met Jen for lunch, then walked the dogs together. At night, went to the cinema with Pete and saw a really great film. Others might prefer to record their thoughts and feelings about world events or their own personal life. When writing, they might use formal language, such as, today's events in Syria have affected me profoundly. Watching the news reports, I cannot but feel utter despair at the human race's capacity to harm each other. Or perhaps you're a more informal soul. I'm sick to death of G's perpetual whinging. Honestly, doesn't she realise how hard it is when she's complaining non-stop about having to go to Malta for a week with her rents, when I'm stuck at home child-minding for my maddeningly annoying little sister? I'd give anything to go abroad this summer. My life officially sucks. Cheesy or political? Minimalist or hyperbolic? The choice is yours. But whatever you do choose to do this summer holidays, try and factor in a few hours of reading and writing for fun at some point. Why? Because you can. And because it could very well boost your grade in your English exams next year. Karen Elwes at Learning Cauldron wishing you a great summer holiday.